I'm Dean. I'm the dad. I'm Laura. I'm the mom. And I'm Crystal. And I'm the daughter. And together we are Family Plot. That was very nice. But we're not alone this week. No, not at all. We do have a guest. Please. A warm round of applause for Miss Cheryl Holland, our guest. Project? Yes. Yeah, from the I'm from the Darren Holland Project, right? Yeah. Yes. Hi, welcome to Cheryl. Thanks for having me. We love you. So, uh, yeah, she is part of our extended family, as is her <laughs> husband and her daughter. So, you know, we're just all part of one big happily, happy family here on Family Five. Yeah, yes, we, we love are. you too. Uh, so, uh, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. Uh, if you want to help us out, there's a few ways you can do that. One is Patreon. Uh, where you can make a monthly donation, one, three, five, or ten dollars, I believe, are the levels. And there's three different groups you can you can join. You could be part of uh, Team Bunny, uh, Team Electric Bill, or Team Podcast. But it really all goes to the same place uh, to feed the bunny and pay the electric bill. So there you go. Well, and the other animals, like the cat that has decided to lay across Crystal's lap this evening. So, yes, you know. she knew I was depressed. Aww. He's trying to cheer up Krista. That's so nice. Uh, also, if you can't do a monthly donation, we don't insist. Uh, you can do a one-time donation through Buy Me a Coffee. We are on there as well. Any whole dollar amount, that's fine. And if you can't do a donation, we understand that. We've never had a lot of money Certainly. ourselves. Uh, but if you enjoy the show, you can share it on social media. If not, Keep, Keep it, it to, to yourself. yourself. That's all we ask. And if you can't say anything money, nice, don't, don't say anything, anything at all. <laughs> and then I should also point out this is a very special episode for us, not just because we have Cheryl on, but it's our 150th episode. 150 episodes. What a deal. Yeah. So <laughs> what are we talking about today? Well, today we visit the late 1800s and examine the, at that time, popular trend of spiritualism. Then we look into the Fox sisters, perhaps the most famous spiritualists of their age. And then we dig into John Harvey, also known as J.H. Mott, a spiritualist out of Memphis, Missouri, and his repeated forays into the world of spiritualism in this A. Conan Doyle approved episode of the Family Plot Podcast. But first, but first, we were totally out of sorts last week because our Krista was just not feeling real well, not feeling herself. So we were one crystalless. And so definitely very important that we give a great big welcome back to our Krista for Krista's check in with Krista, Krista Corner. I'm back. <laughs> You may have to come up. Remember, we're using different microphones this week. Ah! <laughs> well, that was loud. Well, that's what happens when you're supposed to be loud. But fair enough. I get loud. This week has not been the best week for me either. I will say that. Yes, but you are going to soldier through it because you are amazing and that's what you do. Yep. That's what you do. That's what you do when you got something hard to get through. There you go. Absolutely. You just got to keep moving on until you find good things. And you have a good thing. You have I a do. good thing that you hit yesterday. That happened yesterday. Um, so a lot of the people that follow the show know that you have had a steady TikTok following for over the last year. Over the last year or so. I just now hit 2,000. 2,000 followers on her TikTok channel. Way to go, Krista. That's a big deal. That's a lot of people who That's decided to follow you just, on TikTok. That was a lot of people who were just We like, lost Ooh. Cheryl. Yeah, we, we did lose Cheryl. Oh, my goodness gracious. We lost our Cheryl. Welcome back. 
back. Welcome back, Cheryl. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, I don't know. my life. To- it's okay. It happens. You know, you never know. Well, I'm just let you guys know. Are going to occur. And, you know, we can edit. So, yay, edit. Yeah. So, just an FYI, my electricity went out three times. Your what went out three times? Her electric- electricity. Oh. Wow. So, they're having some issues out there. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Blue Springs. <laughs> Grain Valley. Oh, Grain Valley. Even worse. <laughs> Even worse. <laughs> so, where were you, Krista? Well, I was at 2,000 followers. That's right. You were at 2,000 followers. Have you gotten any new today? Are you I've, over 2,000? I've gotten <sighs> like 30 new ones. Wow. Yesterday. I don't know how many I got today. I haven't checked my TikTok today. Wow. Oh, I also awesome. get a, get a oh, I got 15 new ones today. Yeah, she's up to 2015. No. Woohoo. I'm up to 2051. Woo, she's in 2051. Oh, I got my numbers. Oh. Dyslexic. Well, see, now Chris needs to take over <laughs> our TikTok. <clears throat> she needs uh, to have a family well, plot TikTok. Too. To be fair, I think I did like a family plot TikTok. Talk video one time and it was Chris and me being totally goofy. <laughs> and that's like the only thing we family clubs ever put on. Listen, TikTok. that was funny, okay? That it was, was so funny. You well, you guys do goofy so well. So we do goofy well. But you know, you you get that from hanging out with me and you have to be goofy. That is true. We have to be super goofy to hang out with you. <laughs> but we love you. <laughs> we still love you. It's like Cheryl, we gotta be goofy to hang out with Cheryl too. So so anything else? I I want I want to make sure that you have time to talk about all of it. I'm super excited about your TikTok um, channel. But do, do you have anything else that you want to that you're excited about, or that you want to tell other people? Anything that I, you want to share? I do have something I do want to share. I have been thinking of starting. Uh, to work on mom with business. Uh huh. Like I've uh-huh. been thinking of making yes. my own stuff. Yes, and, and you've done some it. incredible art pieces already. Uh-huh. And you're thinking about joining up with me. We're gonna get a pretty good size sock of pieces and put them on Etsy and try to sell them and and put them up for sale and get some extra money for you for you to continue exploring your art interests. That's awesome. So she has already made one really beautiful I made uh, a deer really, mask. Yeah. Um, I made it from scratch. She yep. made the design. She made it out to, to compressed paper and, and different molding clay and paints and just totally made and this I whole unique made, little mask. I also made a design for one that was a lynx that I want to turn into mm-hmm. a mask and put like mesh of the eyes and paint that. Uh huh. Absolutely. And she's making them completely from scratch. It's no forms, none of that. It is her complete unique artwork. I love it. So keep in mind if you do want, end up wanting to get anything from the Etsy store, some prices may be heightened because they are homemade and not built from a base. Absolutely. We'll definitely keep everyone up to date on that. Yeah, because we love our Krista. Super exciting. Very. She is very talented. She's a very talented baby. Uh, You know, I'm trying. (laughs) So, is that it? Do you have anything else you wanted to share? Well, I'm working on a lot of my art styles, so I'm Mm -hmm. hoping that I can go ahead and post some art and make, like, a new account on TikTok for, like, Family Plot to try and get more. Sounds like a plan. To try and get more viewers and listeners for us. Hey, we like viewers and listeners. Well, listeners anyway. Maybe since well, have and 2,000 followers. It's something that here. Chris uh, it threw out there, and we might look at doing. Um, instead of just doing a Chris's Corner, she wanted to do a... Podcast instead of a podcast. podcast. It's like po- 
podcast, but it's called P A W W W D, and then cast P A W D cast instead of P O D cast. It's gonna be called podcast where I get to talk about my experience experiences as a furry, and then I also have another thing that I have been wanting to talk about. Um, but I think that would just be really cool. Yeah, it sounds cool. Uh huh. Absolutely. I was going to ask you about it if you didn't, because I heard you talking about it with mom. Yeah, I I was like, I realized that we had the stuff for podcasting, and I'm just like, hmm, I might be interested in doing a podcast because I thought that was really funny. It is. It, it's and, it's and very we can cute. Link it up. We can link it up with the Family Plot Podcast, and, and I can link it up with my Etsy shop just uh-huh. in case anybody wants to see Absolutely. how how far I'm getting or. Wants to mm-hmm. see my work. You know, Absolutely. Sounds fun to me. <laughs> I like it, like it. I, I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to, while we're talking about artistic things, I want to give Cheryl a chance to talk about their group and any of the other shows that she's going to be on and that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that works. That's okay. But I do you have anything else that you want to talk no, about before I, I we No, I got what I wanted to get out. After. Perfect. All right, so let's turn our attention to Cheryl. Hi Cheryl. Hey. First off, thank you for taking your time out of your evening with your child and your hubby who we love as well. Um and I know that you are, you have your own small business and you also Mm -hmm. have the group and then you also work full time and you're a full time mom. So I know you're super, super busy. Yeah, yeah. Um, So my small business, I sell Sensi on the side. I'm a Sensi consultant. Um, I'm in a band with my husband, and we do original music, and we're called the Darren Holland Project. We are on all musical digital platforms, uh, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes. Uh, I can't remember all YouTube music, you know, Amazon <laughs> music and all those. Every um, place good. If it's good, you're there. Yep, yep, Pandora and all that. Um, Yeah, Crystal was wearing one of your t-shirts yesterday. Oh, yeah, the Sanctify t-shirt. Is that the the yellow one? Yes, yes. It looks so good on her. (laughs) Thank you. Absolutely. She's representing Cheryl. She's got you, Aunt Cheryl. (laughs) Appreciate it. So we're we're a... um, Original music duo. We're called the Darren Holland Projects. We collaborate with so many different artists. So we are a project. Um, but it's the night. Um, we both the Metro by Berlin and we also did, uh, kids at most of our, the majority of our music. <sighs> done a couple of interviews. Mm-hmm. You, uh, come here, Paula. Come here. Oh. We, here she comes again. Here she comes again. Time to scooch in. Ugh. Sorry about that. That's okay. Like I said, I'm not sure if it's you guys are up or me. Can you hear me? <laughs> You're moving better now, a lot better. Okay, good. Yeah, it, it's a much better picture of you, so. Because that would have been my next thing um, was to turn off cameras and just go with the audio. Yeah, I can turn off my camera too. Maybe that'll work. Yeah, we can. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Um, heard, but uh, we are on all digital platforms. The Darren Holland Project. Search us up, and you should be able to find us. We're on Google Music, Amazon. Cool. Very cool. Google Music, Amazon. Basically, if it's a, a good place for music, you're there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Hey. Awesome. Sorry. And do you want to start us out? Of course, we'll make sure that we have links for all of your things, for your Cincy shop, for 
um, for your music, where people can find your music and your name and everything. If you have like a press photo or anything, you can send to okay. us. Yeah, I'll definitely <laughs> we'll get sure you guys. up on the Facebook group and Twitter, right? Hmm? Send out her information yeah, and no. stuff on the Twitter and Facebook group. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I was asking him a question about his cat. Yep, yeah, that's okay. Cheryl knows. Oh, Cheryl no. is queen of the pets. I know. <laughs> I've been to oh, yeah. I'm a crazy cat lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the puppies too. Oh. Well, yeah, and the puppies too. Our fish died recently, so we don't have a fish anymore. Oh, I'm so sorry. I love you. Pretty long life. Yeah. Oh, they love you guys too. They love all the attention. I miss our puppy. (laughs) Well, maybe, maybe with dad working, if y'all are doing a good job, maybe we can think about maybe getting a puppy. Uh, but we have to get all of our other stuff done. Me and Dimix were planning on first. cleaning hallway and our room too. And it has to like, stay cleaned up, especially if we're going to get any new animal. It has to stay cleaned up. Okay. Oh, yeah. You don't want the dog shoe in your stuff. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. So. Well, yeah, I guess we probably ought to start talking about our topic, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not in a hurry. If I'm if I'm cutting in on something, let me know, and I'll I'll, I'll hush my big mouth. But no, you started never. to introduce me, so I wanted to be sure that I, I said what needed to be said. If if we're heading yeah. that way, you you can do uh, what's his name? Got a really big show, folks. Really uh, big big show or something. Uh, like yeah, Ed Sullivan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is a, a reference so dated that only my parents would get it, yeah, and one of them is dead. That's not necessarily true. That's not true. I know who I told it is. But I got it. <laughs> no. One of them is dead. <laughs> one of them is dead. <sighs> well, he is. He is. Wow. Wow, but that's way you call so yourself like, out there, bit. <laughs> it's just like one of them is dead. <laughs> so let's talk spiritualism. Uh, this is going to be. A- <laughs> wow, that really actually worked out to be a pretty good segue. Yeah, didn't it? Didn't- <laughs> Now, this is going to be a brief primer um, because I didn't want to spend half the episode going into all the ins and outs of spiritualism. Uh, in, In the 1800s, mostly thanks to the Fox sisters, whom we will discuss momentarily, Spiritualism became quite the to-do. Uh, remember, we are dealing here with a time period with no television, no radio, no internet. So what was there to do but go to public events? Concerts, mummy unwrappings, lectures, and the odd magician were about all there was to see. Uh, in see fact... did there. <laughs> You saw what I did there? I did. Okay. I did see what you did there. Uh, in so fact, at did. one point... Um, there was a public spectacle where uh, somewhere in the American Southwest, they ran two trains into each other as yeah, a public thing. That seems a little excessive for, you know, just a Friday afternoon show. Mm. <laughs> We're the Fox sisters. Yes. Uh, I, I, you, you, you move, Pat. I need. I need. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, so. When the Fox sisters began doing their seances, uh, uh, they were immensely popular with the public. Uh, many absolutely believed the Fox girls and others like them were capable of piercing the veil and speaking with the other side. And while the Fox sisters eventually confessed to their shenanigans, it was too late. The trend was loose in the wild, and for the next hundred years or so, the trend of spiritualism continued, compelled by famous personages like Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, author of the Sherlock Holmes stories, who believed wholeheartedly in the spiritualist movement, uh, and even tried to convince his friend, Harry Houdini, to stop being dead set against it, which, weirdly, we will talk in later episodes about Sherlock Holmes and Harry uh, Houdini? 
Yeah. Well, actually, um, the guy that, that gave us the idea for this episode is a gentleman from St. Joe named R.J. Jackson. He works for the News Press Gazette, I believe. And he found a reference to uh, Houdini, uh, like, showing up as spiritualist in the late 1800s, about 20 years before he knew we knew he was doing that. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Uh, at its core, spiritualism is a belief that spirits of the dead remain among us and are capable of reaching out and that certain people are capable of receiving uh, these transmissions from the departed. Mm -hmm. And while it's routinely debunked, I definitely want to make the point that I absolutely believe that there are people who can communicate with the dead. A lot of the people making the claim, though, are absolutely frauds. The two are not mutually exclusive. That is true. And we agree. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I, and I, we know that Cheryl is also definitely interested in the paranormal side of things. So she has her own views on it as well. She's done some ghost hunting and that kind of thing in the past. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So uh, Cheryl, uh, had you encountered spiritualism before? I mean, other than John Edwards and his old TV show? Well, uh, of course, um, Jean Dixon was huge in the 80s. Um, she was a psychic to the president. She supposedly, I'm also familiar with Edgar Casey, who is re referenced as a sleeping spiritualist. Because yeah, um, he would get his communications with the, the sleeping prophet, Ed, Edward, Edgar Casey. Yeah, I do know him. And, but and I've I never heard. We should do a, uh, an episode on him, but uh, Astonishing Legends did a three parter, and I just don't feel like we could add anything to that story to to do it ourselves you know i i always think that personally i think everyone has a little bit of psychic in them you know that intuition is i would mm -hmm. personally think is part of being a psychic you know you get those six senses you know or mm -hmm. right right no absolutely um, we all have a little bit a little bit of psychic abilities in us yeah, I mean, I, I mean, have a board. Board, honestly. Well, I don't know a single yeah. person who hasn't had a, like a prescient dream, even if it's prescient about nothing. Like you know, it, like that that moment you 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 remember you're having a conversation and you realize you dream the conversation. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So well, even I go when I get to go time. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, even oh, no, with ghost hunting, I, we, you want to talk about ghost hunting? I'm here to listen. <laughs> um, but even with ghost hunting, you know, sometimes I would get, I would, you know, presence of some sort, and you know, not everybody. Oh, Cheryl, we lost you again. Oh, Hold on a sec. Okay, go ahead. Uh oh. Uh oh. Say, you still with it, Cheryl? Ah, there you know, go. It's all pretty much connected. It's all pretty much connected. Spiritualism, you know, anything to do with the paranormal. Uh, I agree with that wholeheartedly. All right. So the next, I, I hope that I'm not interrupting you. I, it sounds like you were done. Um, the Fox sisters are the next people that we're going to talk about, of course, you, as you mentioned earlier, I'm sorry. Um, these were three sisters living in the 1800s. The two younger sisters, Margareta or Maggie and Catherine or Kate convinced their parents and older siblings that there were ghosts in their home who would wrap out messages at night to the two girls. Neighbors begin to come visit them to see these unique, excuse me, these unique events, not realizing that they were witnessing a performance. In fact, it was around this time they claimed that the ghost in their house was Charles B. Rosia, no record of a person that it has ever existed with that name at that area for that time period, and certainly not in an association with their home, 
who was murdered and buried in their cellar. When retelling the story, A. Conan Doyle claimed they went down to their basement and dug up the cellar, finding a few bones as proof of their words. This turns out to have been not the case. Then they visit, then they went to visit their older sister, Lay, now married as Lay Foxfish. <laughs> That's quite the name. And demonstrated their abilities to their older sister. Lay then became their manager. I think that might be Leah. Leah, you think? I think. L-E-A-H. Maybe Leah, I guess. That's kind of a weird pronunciation of it, but I'll go with it. Um, <laughs> their sister then became their manager and took them on the road as mediums. For many, many years, they became quite famous. In 1888, Margareta, after 40 years of performing as a medium, admitted that her wrappings were a hoax and publicly demonstrated her method. By this point, the spiritualism movement was in full swing, and while Maggie recanted her confession the next year, they were still never able to recapture the success they had prior to Maggie's confession. So she couldn't keep her mouth shut, and she just pooed on her siblings. <laughs> According to many, the Fox sisters were the key that unlocked the age of spiritualism. Wow. Yeah. Now, I, I, and the thing about the Fox sisters is, even though they came out and basically said they were a hoax, it didn't slow spiritualism down one way. Mm -mm, no, it just made them out to be the liars. Right. <laughs> they never recaptured their fame. Right. How you doing, Cheryl? Other than you've turned off. I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> I saw your microphone off there. I was like, is that on purpose or? <laughs> oh, yeah. Close. I was clearing my throat and it went. Fair enough. No. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, now, little is known. Okay. I'm sorry. I should introduce this part, shouldn't I? No. Um, that's okay. Now it's time to talk about our, our main subject, John Harvey Mott. Uh, little is known about J.H. Mott's early life. We know he was born around 1845 in Memphis, Missouri, to a local blacksmith. Uh, in the 1845 was about the time the Fox sisters were starting to uh, tour. So, yeah. so we know if he was born then, then by the time he was old enough to appreciate it, the spiritualism movement was already moving. Yeah. Uh, we know. Oh, yeah. Now, like I said, we know he was born to a local blacksmith in Memphis, Missouri. We also know he was a troubled youth. He would flee from his house in the middle of the night, swearing that he was being chased, or else he would wander around the store where he worked, puzzled, claiming he had just been having a conversation with someone who had simply vanished. Also, we know people noticed strange things about the Mott family home. People heard rappings in the home and saw furniture rattling or saw strange shadowy figures lurking outside the home. Mott claimed he wanted nothing to do with the supernatural. Unfortunately for him, the guy he worked for at the store was a spiritualist who believed that the spirits had marked young Mott as a medium. And thus, Mott eventually began to host seances. Mm. So that is John Harvey Mott as, as just how he got into the business. And I wish I could have found out more about him, but there just wasn't a lot outside of this, right? Yeah. Yeah. His early life is not well documented. Well, because, you know, people weren't as impressed with with things back then as we are. He's just another, it'd be like being the owner of another subway. Yeah. He's just, he's just another dude. Just another dude in the business. The 
the talking to dead people business, that that kind of business, you know? Yeah. So uh, now is the point where we take a moment for a word from our sponsors. Oh, okay, if we have to. Uh, well, we don't have to, but I, yeah, let's try. Let's, let's give it a shot. Yeah. Well, I'm guess I, I guess I'm glad I did because, honey, I feel sponsored. Yay! How are you, Krista? Uh, are you feeling sponsored too? I'm feeling very sponsored. Excellent. What about you, Cheryl? You feeling sponsored? I think that was a yeah, a very robotic yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> See, Cheryl and up, and we lost her again. <laughs> Thank Cheryl. goodness for editing. We'll just we'll just wait. <laughs> so the sponsors are a trip. <laughs> Maybe she she felt so sponsored she had to run out and get some. I bet that's what it was. She went to go support the sponsors. I'm so proud of her. Yay! Welcome back! Thanks for supporting our sponsor, Cheryl! Yeah, we just decided that you left to go support our sponsors. Let me move that. You, you felt so sponsored that you had to go you had to go support our sponsors. That's right. You were so impressed. Now but before we get on too far, I, I just that name Leah Fox Fish. Yeah, that's a horrible name. I just I no, wonder. No, I don't know. That, that is those pretty. Names. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Well, <laughs> the Fox was her maiden name. Fish was her husband's she, name. Okay. So she so, became a Fox you, Fish. You, if, might as well call call <laughs> a freaking koi so, fish the Katsune fish then because. So she was named after a predator and <laughs> married a fish. She agreed <laughs> to marry someone who, who has been named, her prey. Who was She's a man eater. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, I was um I did some research too when I found out She's about a this. Man -eater. Uh -huh. And I found a story from the Kansas City Library dot org, dot org about him, and it's pretty interesting. Wow! Look at her doing her research. Yeah. So you found uh, more stuff on John Harvey. Yeah. Um, I get three. Oh no! Oh, he was. Medium. I may have you do like you. You may have to do like a, so, I mean, a, a not snippet with just her, and like insert it in if she can. Because I want to know about that, but I can't hear anything she's saying. Yeah, it, I, I can do that if we have to. Yeah. Uh, so, what did you find out, or did 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 you cover the same stuff that we did? Some of it was the same. Um, there are, he was considered a medium. Yeah, materializing medium. We were actually just about to go into that. Because, uh, uh, yeah, Mott uh, didn't was, rely on raps and knocks uh, the way the Fox uh, sisters did. Uh, he, which that's something else is it would be real hard to do what he did today, at least in person. Now, uh, like online or something, it would be fairly easy, but uh, just people yeah. aren't as accepting uh, yeah. of, of things as they are. So if some guy disappeared behind a partition and then their dead relatives showed up, I think most people would suspect eh, there's something to that. Fair enough, absolutely. But that is that is what J. H. Mott did. So he was a materializing medium. So unlike the Fox sisters, he didn't he didn't use the wraps and he didn't use the knots. But rather, he seemed to make relatives and loved ones just 
appear and speak to his customers or his patrons. He would sit in front of a curtained hallway or later a curtained box. And soon people would see the faces of loved ones and relatives that would communicate with the person. Mott would sit behind the partition and his guests would join hands and sing. I wonder what they sing. And soon the curtain would open, revealing the lost loved ones. While the supernatural origins of his talents may have been questionable, his talents as a performer must have been formidable because trains visited his Memphis, Missouri regularly and local hotels filled up with those who hoped to be able to see relatives. One account even had him presiding over a spirit wedding with a second medium helping him summon a spirit groom and bride for the ceremony. Wow. That is some serious um Spooky marriages. Yeah. Well, now you know where they where uh, Tim Burton got the idea for Beetlejuice. Right. Of course, bride. <laughs> bride, <Right>, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> now, while his fame was growing, not everyone believed. Uh, after several skeptical press accounts. Three visitors from Illinois snuck aniline dye, which I should have looked up what that is, but I, I had no idea, uh, into a session and at a critical point during the seance, squirted it into the spirit cabinet. Cursing was heard and Mott emerged from the cabinet with splatters of red upon him. Accounts of the incident appeared in the New York Times and other papers across the U.S., not one to let himself be deterred, Mott waited out the bad press and decided to start over, this time in a big city. Kansas City was the city he chose, and soon he was installed on East 15th Street in Kansas City, Missouri, which East 15th Street is not a place I'd want a business today. Mm, yeah, yeah, but apparently, you know, the Back then, it was a different, huh, it was, <laughs> Colonel Van Horn was one of his clients. Uh, what a, okay. So, Kansas City, here he comes. Soon, the Kansas City Star reported that Mott was quite popular with locals who could afford his services. He counted among his clients, Colonel Van Horn, who was outlived by only one of his children, it, in March of 1885, J.B. Lawrence <laughs> attended a seance and, like the truth seekers from years earlier, he carried a quantity of dye. Unlike them, he also had an arrest warrant in his pocket. At one point during the seance, J.B. squirted the dye into the cabinet. Two policemen who had admitted, who had been admitted into the room unobserved during the ceremony, approached the cabinet, forced his wife to open it. Seated inside was Mr. Mott claiming that he had been in an unconscious state until the dye had been squirted into his face. Still, the police felt like the situation proved him a fraud and arrested him. He was put on trial where Colonel Van Horn and others came to the medium's defense. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> Still, the prosecution put a lot of witnesses on the stand who gave a dam who gave da damning evidence against the medium. In fact, one of Colonel Van Horden's friends, Joshua Thorne, a surgeon, testified that he had attended at least three of Mott's seances, including one where he supposedly made Van Horn's deceased son. Charlie appear. However, 
Thorne also testified on one occasion he saw Mott's face among the deceased and on another heard him cough from inside the cabinet. He said that the fraud made him sick and he had attended no further seances after that. Still, after three days of trial, the judge J.T. Clayton acquitted Mott. He said that while many of the witnesses believed him to be a fraud, they had attended the seances out of their own free will. Mott returned to Memphis, Missouri, settling on a street that locals know as Spirit Ridge. And there, Mr. P Mott passes out of history. I, okay, I find it funny that in the 1800s, when you really didn't have much to do outside of work and whatnot, yeah. that everybody is shorting their name to initials, J-H, J-T, J-D. <laughs> and today, with the internet and all the stuff to do and how busy everyone is, we use full names. I don't get that. <laughs> <laughs> they used them. It's just their children grew up, hated what they were named, and shortened them. Hey. Okay, I feel like you're calling me out. I am. <laughs> I didn't change my and name. My <laughs> <laughs> you're fine, Chris. You did exactly what mom wanted you to do. I did Chris. And so, but okay. that doesn't mean I'm a guy. It just means I like to be Chris. You're a fine Chris. You have an uncle named Chris. You do? Chris is a girl's name, too. There are uh, lots of girl Chris's. You're just fine. What, whoever and whatever you are is just fine with us. Yeah, I, it, like I said, that, that struck me as I was researching the story is like JB, JH, JT. <laughs> Can some of these people just use their names, please? Right? No. <clears throat> because, come on, that's because maybe, maybe a lot more people would have been gay back then if it was okay to change your gender. Oh. <laughs> Either that's a possibility. Some people were. It could have been like mm, some people were separately. Mm, that's yeah. right. Well, I'm just like man, I just outed like the whole 17th century. Did you check that shit out? I did. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Although language, I have to edit that. <laughs> you gotta have to do a lot of editing on this episode, baby. Thank goodness you don't. That's some. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wow. We are talking about everybody else's stuff, babe. What? What? Well, I'm confused you too. Had a big week this week too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I guess in a way you could say that this week's episode, and in fact, most of our future episodes, will be brought to you by the Super 8 and Independence. Where I now work is the night auditor. Yay. Yay. Assuming I don't get fired. Okay. okay. Come on. That's it, not it. It's optimism, you just, father. You just gave Poulash like total free advertising. We lost Cheryl, then she came back. You okay, Cheryl? You guys Cheryl. got lost. You guys stopped your stream for a minute. <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. You're on. It showed us you were gone and then you were back. So, <laughs> yeah, we're having some connection issues tonight on one end or the other, or both. Yeah, I can see in purple. That is pretty. Is she, is she okay? Who? Her. She can see stuff in purple? Yeah, this. Because she's wearing the sunglasses, and I guess they're a, they've are they got a they, purple tint. They have a purple tint. Oh, okay. okay. Also, they're kind of pink on the outside. That's why they kind of have a purple tint. I see. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. I'm sorry. Uh, you were saying? <laughs> well, no, I just, uh, you know, uh, 
I, I would, and I wonder if they were all named John. Like, sure. were there a lot of Johns at that time? Um, probably. There were probably also a lot of dicks. Yes, because they had not invented plumbing yet. <laughs> and so they had to have extras. Well, okay, fair <laughs> enough. But I was referring to the name, not the... <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't take a gummy before the episode. I'm just saying. (laughs) Mother. What? So, yeah. I'm not working. (laughs) This is park. (laughs) Oh, boy. (laughs) It could be worse. She could have been shroomed. Can I have high beat pro- uh, No, I high could. Ibuprofen. Can I? Can I have high ibuprofen? Of course. I call that high ibuprofen. Yeah. And I, I looked for Spirit Ridge, but if it still exists, it, uh, and if it still exists, it's no longer a, a thing, or it's only a thing locally, and. I, I didn't know who to call to go, hey, is there still a spirit ridge around there? I am so sorry. You can always try Google Maps. <clears throat> see, I looked on Google Maps, but I didn't see it. Now, and and they say this it's a street the locals know as Spirit Ridge. Oh. I also am curious about why they call it that. Where did they call it that just because Mr. Mott lived there, or did they call it that because like uh, Osage, Fort, Fort Osage. Osage. The city around Fort Osage has a lot of hauntings. Mm-hmm. So, you know, to call that... Sibley. Yeah, Sibley. Um, yeah, so, you know, to say that there might be a spirit ridge there yeah. wouldn't be too... And I wonder if it might be the same situation near Memphis. Memphis. Memphis, Missouri, not Memphis, Tennessee. They're very. I know different. nothing about okay. either place. As someone who's grown up living here, I love the names in this part of the story, though, because you're talking about Van Horn and you're talking about um, what was the other? Joshua Thorne. Uh, Lawrence. Oh, J.B. Lawrence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Clayton. I, I, I've seen there's a high school or a building downtown or something. That's the Clayton building. Yeah, no, the, I mean, there's a lot of names like Colonel Van Horn. Is, yeah, Van there's Horn, a high Van Horn High School, Van Horn Street. That, I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I wanted to call Van Horn High School and ask them how they feel about being named after a guy who was deep mm-hmm. into spiritualism. But you can kind of forgive Van Horn because he lost three of his four kids before he passed. And that, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think maybe his wife as well. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was a rough, he, he had a rough time. Well, Cheryl, that, what do you think so far? So Our, far, we're at the end. Well, yeah, we're at summary and final thoughts. It's where we get everybody's summary or final thoughts. Yeah. Definitely interesting. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, Well, it's definitely interesting. It definitely fits in with the spiritualism movement from the 1800s where, you know, a lot of people went to these places for entertainment. And I don't know if he was really a true spiritualist or not, because, you know, back in those times, it was so easy to fake things. And <clears throat> supposedly he actually, a lot of people were saying uh, that uh, account that he actually had specters that look like that were there. Can oh, yeah, be, I- you know, are they, you know, how does that work? Yeah, no, like uh, Van Horn said it was that he saw Charlie and you'd think he'd know what Charlie would look like. And I'm not sure how J.H. Mott would, but, you know, I don't know where he was in this process. Also, your cat is very cute. It it had to. Oh, yeah, that's Gypsy. Yeah. 
Gypsy's a baby. Gypsy's a baby. Well, Gypsy had to show off. It's just a baby. Hi, Mary. Gypsy, Gypsy is is uh, Cheryl's Apollo. Oh. <laughs> I had to go stop a dog and cat fight. <laughs> I stepped away for a second. <laughs> it's okay. I I just saw Gypsy on the camera, and I was like, Gypsy's like, hey, look at me too. Oh yeah, she. Oh, I'm her person, apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that was the only thing that I didn't get is that how he was able to fool people with faces of their their you know dead relatives. I I just I, I don't understand yeah, that I don't at know. all. But I don't either. everything so else, was, maybe he was. Yeah, everything else reads as a hoax, which we know a lot of these spiritualists were hoaxers. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. again, like I said at the beginning, that doesn't mean I don't believe that there aren't people who can do that. It just the two are not mutually exclusive, uh, just like people have hoaxed exactly. Bigfoot sightings. But I still think there's a Bigfoot out there. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, yeah aren't mutually exclusive thoughts. Hun, you, you have mm -hmm. anything you want to add or throw in or? Um, I, I just, I mean, we've talked about. It is fascinating. Spiritualism and stuff. And, you know, it just, it's definitely interesting that we're, someone who was very notable for it is, through our metropolitan area is connected, you know. Yeah, and and I mean, I've always known uh, for the longest time time about uh, a, a Conan Doyle's uh, affinity for spiritualism, mm -hmm. but towards the end of his life, he also believed in fairies. So, yeah, as as mm -hmm. he got older, he got open to a lot of ideas that, yeah, arguments. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, we. We try not to instigate those. I know Cheryl has been in that scenario before, too. <laughs> Krista? I don't have much to say about it, except, except Foxfish now makes me want to make a persona that is called a Kitsune. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dude. That would be hilarious, though. That's make like a mask out of that. Make a make a little yeah. fins with yeah. little yeah, ears. Yeah, like the ears, the foo -foo 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 ears. Krista Fox fish coming up. So I'd be, be Kitsune fish. Like the have you guys ever are, been to a spiritualist? Fluffy. I'm Is sorry. What was that, Cheryl? Ever been to to a psychic or a spiritualist before? I have. I have, absolutely. Um, so the Kansas City uh, Psychic Fair. Uh, one oh, cool. Of my very best friends. Um, her dad was a vendor. Um, he, he went and did some mining mineral things and, and nice. different uh, stones my precious stones and then would go to cons and sell the wire wrap jewelry and all of that um and so she would get discounts on tickets and we would go since her dad was a vendor there and it was really really neat and the closest I've come I used to watch uh, Crossing Over with John Edwards all the time <laughs> and I just thought it was it, that was so ridiculous because there wasn't any way to check what he was doing. And it's like, like the stuff he would say was just so vague. Is someone here have a relative that whose name begins with T? Well, almost certainly T is one of the more common right. letters in the English language. But there's a lot of common uh -huh. letters in the English language if you think about it, like A and E and O. Mm -hmm. And I, and I like, like watching. Um, go ahead. Are so important. 
<laughs> I like watching. Um, I don't know if you guys ever watched the show Long Island Medium. Uh huh. Uh huh. I like watching that show. Mm-hmm. My mom loves her. She actually came to Kansas City. Did she? A couple of years ago. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I've never seen one live. It just uh, again. Uh, now the the one guy I do kind of like. I can't remember. I think his name is Chip Coffee. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and uh, I just he doesn't seem to be as flailing around as most spiritualists. He seems over, to like over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just to be more, he's, he's a bit more spot on. He doesn't seem like he's playing a guessing game and going, yeah, got it. Mm-hmm. So, and, and then I've met people who have contact with the dead and, and most of them I've met, I mean, all together in my life, probably five or six people, but they all tell me the same kind of stories about how when they grew up, they couldn't tell the dead from the living because it, they presented themselves the same way. Mm-hmm. It was only as they got older that they began to distinguish because they'd be talking to somebody that they thought they could see quite clearly and the rest of their family was like, who are you talking to? Mm-hmm. So... I've met people with the ability, I, I mm-hmm. but the one thing I will say about most people I, is they seem very disjointed, like they're not real good at, at the real world. And I always put it down to, if I could see the dead, I don't know how well I'd interact with the yeah, real world. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean... Yeah. That would be a constant distraction. It would have to add chaos to your life. You know, even if even if you just try to ignore it all the time, still. Yeah, exactly. So I would think so. Yeah, I mean, it's just it, it, it's so chaotic. It, it would be such a chaotic thing. So it, I absolutely believe in some of the basis of spiritualism. But most spiritualists that I've seen or heard of, I don't believe. Now, Mott, there is a slim chance, I have to admit, that maybe he did go unconscious. And that's how he was a, that was part of his trance or whatever. Uh, Not really Uh unconscious, I guess, but in a trance-like state. And that's how he did it. But I don't know. It's just... With with him getting outed that first time that by those guys in Illinois, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I guess my my thing is is to move him into the fraud category unless I find out more information, which seems highly unlikely because. I looked, and if there hadn't been an article uh-huh. uh, through the KCQ, I wouldn't have found as much as I did. Yeah. So. We all need to take a trip to Lilydale, New York. What's in Lilydale, New York? Lily's entire town of spiritualists. Oh, okay. Is is that where the Fox Sisters came from? Because I know they came from like Hayden Lake or Haydenville or something like that, but it's no longer called that. Yeah, it's the general area from where they're from. And okay. the whole town yeah. Yeah. came in. Wow, well, that's all right. Yeah, a whole another connection to this level to this story on the whole other side of it. Well, she had a <clears throat> yeah, no, that and, and that's great. I, I mm-hmm. love it when people come with facts. See, I would go. I would definitely go just to check it out. Yeah, I would too. I might bring a shovel and try to go find the Fox Sisters' basement, but I I would like to check it out. (laughs) (laughs) Nope, I've dug down six feet and there's nothing here. (laughs) I don't get why you're digging six feet. Because when you bury a body... 
unless you're just. I know. I know. You got to dig it six feet. You don't have to, but it's. It, if you don't want it found, deep is good. <laughs> I, and, and I don't know that from personal experience, but I'm just, you know, it seems you to me very like anyone body. What body? <laughs> I didn't bury anyone. Oh, trust me. If there was a body out there, there'd be more than one. Wow. Wow. There ain't no Ooh, I didn't ever bomb. think about that <laughs> with us living in the trailer park. Holy butts. <laughs> There could be one right in our yard. We have how many? I mean, gosh, we haven't even been in here a year, and they've already torn down four places and rebuilt them. Okay, who how knows, many who knows if there's a body happen? under? Who knows if there's a body under well, our house? That's oh. that. That reminds me. You know, the uh, hotel is haunted. The, the Super Eight. I didn't. Yeah, apparently, apparently, most of the staff have had experiences. Yeah. You're going to be next. Who knows Who knows if there's a body under our house, though? I, that's what I'm saying. Wow. And, like, someone OD'd in 204? There's a cat body in my yard. Oh, now that I believe. Oh, that's that I believe. <laughs> but it's a death on sight, and sometimes those leave a, a yeah. ghost. Yeah. It, and I would think it more likely if the person died, you know, high, because I think the ghost would be high. It'd be like... <laughs> Whoa. Oh, what dude. happened? This is wacky. <laughs> I mean, I think you'd spend 50 years just trying to figure out why you're still high. <laughs> Unless there's dude, like I a feeling just trying hand. to ghost that sort of meets with you afterwards and goes, okay, here's the deal. You're dead. But you died high, so you're going to be high for your entire afterlife. <laughs> Living the life. <laughs> between high and fever dream anymore. <laughs> because it feels the same. No, fever dreams are so funny. I'm funny when I'm not even trying to be. That's not supposed to be funny. You still are, I promise. Wow. Wow, we're at the end already? Yeah, we're at the end already, and it doesn't seem like we were on here that long at all. Um, well, about, about almost an hour. Uh, we just had some technical difficulties. Yeah, that probably. Yeah. 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 So, and that's our show. Thanks for listening as always. Thanks for getting us to episode 150. Yes, amazing 150 episode. And thanks to Cheryl for being here with us. Thank you, Cheryl, for helping us celebrate well, our Thank you for having me. Uh, we, You're we, most we welcome. Love. It was a lot of fun. It, you're a lot of fun. We we need we need to do another. Well, here's the thing. We need to do another one shot, and I'm working on it. It's going to be heavily inspired by, but not based on uh, the movie Big Trouble in Little China. So, oh, I love that movie. I don't know very many people who don't love that movie. I don't know that movie. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to make Crystal watch oh. it. Well, it, I, it will be it will be researched well, for the new one shot. This is going to be character. Caution you! It is an eighties yeah. movie. I missed the character that I got from the other one shot. I actually already did your experience. Everybody went up a level. Yeah, you keep you keep you keep that same you character. Have points back. It's just a one shot because it's a different timeline from where you were. Gotcha. Well, it's just a one shot because I w wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it because I had somewhat of a different idea for the campaign and I'm still going to do it, but I may just steer these characters into that. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, but yeah, I, w I, I finally got all the characters uh experience everybody went up a level which is cool so uh noel dutch bunny is uh one level closer to being a uh march hare <laughs> well not a march hare but uh uh what are they gunfighter guns i forget the name but yeah you dual wielder gunslinger Gunslinger. I forget the class name. I don't think it's Gunslinger, but... Oh, yeah. That's good. Whatever. I don't remember that. I have substance then. 
But yes, Cheryl, it's always great having you. Heck, we need to get together and just do, do a big dinner or something. Yeah. Like barbecue. Like, a, you know, a, a Thanksgiving in August or something. You know? Yeah, but, that would be amazing food. Well, need any kind of burrs, so we'd have to be doing ham or something like that. Well, That's fine. Well, I was thinking more like, uh, you know, more like barbecue or brisket or, but we could do ham too, whatever. Just, just some sort of big, you know, family style meal. <laughs> like a, like a potluck dinner. <laughs> wow. Um, Let me know when and what. And... Yeah. As soon as we have a night, have, uh, like, let me do some thinking and, I will have Laura get in touch with you since yeah, you guys work work at the same place, so it's a little easier. Um, thanks again, Cheryl, for being on the show. I really enjoy spending time with you, as I said. Uh-huh. Uh, thanks to Bill Barrett, who does our theme music. Uh, if you need a project, uh, a musical project, or just someone to play a show like a wedding or an anniversary, Bill's your guy. You can reach him at Bill Barrent, and that last name is B-E-H-R-E-N-D-T at sbcglobal.net. Uh, also, since Cheryl's on, uh, I'm sure you could, you know, get the shirt, the Darren Holland Project to work your uh, wedding reception or whatever. Am I right about yeah. that? Okay. Absolutely. Uh, also, thanks to Paige email us in D- I'm sorry. Gmail.com. I said you can okay, email cool. on project at gmail.com. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Paige. Oh, yeah. Thanks to Paige Elmore of Reverie True Crime. If you need a true crime podcast, uh, Paige has a, a, a an excellent one. Also, the reason we bring her up is Paige, along with our own Krista, did our logo art. Thank you, Paige. Thank you, Paige. Thanks to Aaron Ganerk of the Big Dumb Fun Show, who continues to promote us locally. Uh, join us like next week as we look into yet another fan-suggested topic, uh, which, uh, again, thank you, RJ, for suggesting this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one being the Willie Family Tragedy. Wow. And I haven't even begun the research on it, so I'm not entirely sure what it's all about. Wow, that is interesting, for sure. Makes you want to go, dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 (laughs) absolutely. Well, thank you, Cheryl. We love you, and bye. Bye. Bye.